So Case was educated as an industrial design engineer at Delphi University of Technology and studied philosophy at Erasmus University, Rotterdam. Currently, he's professor of design innovation at the Faculty of Transdisciplinary Innovation at the University of Technology, Sydney. He's the founder of the UTS Design Innovation Research Centre, that's here, and the New South Wales Designing Art Crime Research, Research Centres. He lectures at universities and design schools throughout the world, and he has published many articles and several books, including Understanding Design and Design Expertise with Brian Lawson. His most recent books are Frame Innovation, Create New Thinking by Design, Designing for the Common Good, and Notes on Design, How Creative Practices Work. That's the 2017 book. So, over to you, Kate. Okay. take off my glasses to read these days. Um, so, uh, well, welcome to the Design Innovation Research Center for this space and the space next to it, um, which we've been sort of working in for the last sort of 10 years. And um, thank you for your uh, talk. I think sort of for the sake of the discussion here, I think it would be interesting. So I've got a background in design as well as in philosophy. But as we are practitioners here, and the talk was quite philosophical, I'll switch to the design side and actually try to sort of give the flip side of the talk a little bit in just sort of 10 minutes or something. And it is um, transition design as a notion and transition design as the way it's been explained here is setting out a need for design to actually step forward and do something. So it's a challenge and it puts some expectations on design. And that's one of the things where I would like to sort of think with you today. Are those expectations realistic? Can design actually do these kind of things? I think one of the most um, talked, sort of, one of the most often mentioned words was complexity. How does how do designers actually deal with complexity? Can designers deal with these big system complexities? I would say that design came from fields where the complexity wasn't that big. So if, comp if design would need to move into this space, it would actually need to change quite fundamentally. And there's a real question whether it can. At least what it does, it actually pulls design out of its comfort zone. And it throws up a lot of questions around the assumptions behind design and how we design and how we teach design. So I just want to name a couple of them. Um, for instance, um, design, we say, is making plans for others to do. Well, in this case, actually, you stick with it because if you want a solution, the process itself is what actually leads to the solution. The design process is not plan making for people to produce something. It is making and doing in one go. We talk about design being problem solving or problem solving like. I think the notion of complexity actually challenges what a problem is or whether we can still call things problems. I'll, co I'll come back to that in a minute. Design also normally is you do something for a company or for a partner organization or however you want to call them. Um, that's interesting in social design because you don't have a clear commissioning party often. It's the whole network that is actually what you're working for. What I see go wrong in social design projects, and some of them are very naive and they go very badly wrong, that is because normally when you, so I'm a product designer by origin, if you're a product designer you work for a company and that company challenges your assumptions. In social design, the projects that go wrong are the ones where the assumptions that the designer starts with actually are never challenged because there isn't that kind of dialogue with one commissioning party. So. That those are all problems for design. Another one. We always think about design as happening in projects. But in this case, you say, well, we actually have to stay with it. It's not a project. Um, I think the longest stream of projects that we've done here in the Designing Our Crime Center is about 10 years. That's not a project anymore. It is a program, but how do you structure a program that is so long if you're used to saying, well, Design is about projects and we get students in, we give them first small projects and then we give them bigger, bigger projects because they're more complex, but it's always a project. And they, as, as you've mentioned, they are on different levels. So I'm still working in Holland too, I'm a professor there for a couple of universities. And let's say in an area like healthcare, I was talking to the Director General of the Ministry of Health there and he said, um, 
a couple of years ago, he said, we've just given up on scaling up the health system in face of the aging population. We can't do it. Think, oh, thank you. <laughs> Very timely, thank you. <laughs> Good that you're doing that. Uh, because he basically said, well, it's too expensive already, people don't want to pay that much taxes, the organization's actually too big and very unwieldy, this is a disaster, we can't scale it up. But he said, what we've done over the years as the government sector, the public sector, we've said, um, we'll, we've more or less sort of pulled care out of society. We've said, we're the experts, we know better how to care, we know better how to do all the medical stuff, so we'll do that for you. You don't do it, we do it. He said, well, when we can't afford that, we have to give it back to society. But how do you give care back to society without actually losing quality? That's not easy. There's some technical gimmicks that you can use these days, and there's the internet, etc., etc., but it is a completely different movement than what we're used to. Talk about a transition, it's actually a re reversal of something. Because it's a reversal, it may not even be such a big problem. A friend of mine is a designer in Holland, um, in Rotterdam, and he set up what he calls a care republic in his own area, which is basically, he realized that a lot of people in the area need care, a lot of people in the area are lonely, lots of people actually want to care for other people, so let's start that connection. And when professional care is needed, let's buy it in together so we can actually get it at a good price instead of the individual care. So. That's what he set up. It works really well. I can, I can sort of show you the website in a minute. Um, it's a bit of a tricky website because you, you've registered as a volunteer before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is really cool and it shows that these things can be done. Of course, people want to care for one another. It's one of the things that make you feel good. So, hey, let's do that. Um, so, the partner organization that you're working for or working with might be your own neighborhood, it might be a whole sector, um, it might be, in this case, also health insurance companies, etc., etc. So, the notion of designers work for somebody else is actually not quite clear, which means that our business models suck, because they're all made for you work for somebody who's going to pay you for what you do. Not anymore. So how do we do that? How do we redevelop that? And also the complexity, and this is a kind of a narky one that I won't get into too much. Um, it sort of stretches our cognitive limits as designers. Because um, what you've seen traditionally is that when there was a really complex problem like infrastructure, we left it to the engineers. Because those problems you need to split up in little, in smaller bits that you can then solve and then you build together the solutions, etc. But leaving things to the engineers actually creates all these kind of sort of dis disjunctions and engineering comes with its own values of efficiency and effectiveness. So you start optimizing a city for traffic flows, which is great, but it's not necessarily the city where you want to live but it's optimized, so it's good. And that's almost the value in itself. So is there a limit to what design can actually do? Because designers have been trying to get into these kind of discussions, but somehow they don't. Is there a natural, li is there a natural limit to the amount of complexity that, it, that design as a paradigm, as a way of thinking and a way of working, can actually deal with? I would say there is, but it, it's a longer story. Um, so these are all very basic things that we know about design. It happens in projects, um, it, uh, it is about making plans, it is dealing with problems, it is working with partner organizations that are all not true in this type of design. The question is, would you still call it design then? Or would you call it something else? Because it is, in a very funny way, it is design beyond design. And that's what we've realized here in the Designing Our Prime Center, so just to sort of We've been around for about 10 years now, actually almost exactly 10 years to the day. And um, actually the last thing we do is designing out crime, literally, because what we're interested in is that crime is a symptom of things that are wrong in society. And using crime as a symptom, and we've been allowed, generously allowed by the Department of Justice to actually look at that, okay, that's the crime, what did lead to this crime? So you're looking at, you're going upstream in a sense, you're going to look at where does this actually come from, which allowed us to do 
a lot of social and cultural projects in society, um, which otherwise would have been very hard to fund. There's always very little funding for good things for the people in society, but there's an immense amount of funding for fear in society. So I can really recommend it. Try to get fear in the mix and the money just flows. Um, what we've realized over the years that, okay, what we started out doing projects. We've done, if you count them, we've done about 140, 150 of them over the 10 years. We've been busy. Small ones, big ones, all kind of different kinds of levels. Um, realizing that, okay, if we really want to have an impact, it's not a project, it's a series of projects, and you have to stay with it, and you're actually also doing the implementation. What you used to call the implementation isn't there anymore. What you used to call the context of a project isn't really there anymore either. It's very permeable. Um, and those larger programs, you start to at some point say, okay, if they... If this is how they grow, let's do that deliberately and call them programs and actually get into a strategic conversation with relevant parties in society, which means that you have to actually start to do capacity building in those organizations so that they can actually understand what you're doing. So we now have a graduate certificate in public sector innovation, which is training up really good public sector people into understanding what we do and actually doing it themselves. And that's another way in which design is going beyond design. Um, I find it sometimes hard to work with designers on these things. It sort of pains me to say it because I love design deeply, but actually those people from the public sector are pretty good at it. And design comes with, oh, it's a project, etc. It comes with all these things that design, where design came from. And that's sort of holding it back a little bit against moving into this space. So it does require a real rethink. And I've, I've seen no, except perhaps Carnegie Mellon, but I haven't looked at it in detail, I've seen no design school even getting close to understanding these things and actually starting to educate this new generation of designers that we need. That's why these discussions are so important. And um, sort of from a philosophy standpoint, I also teach complexity to my students. And the first thing you have to say is forget about solutions. It is actually, just as you said, it is about doing high quality interventions that help the whole system to move forward to a better state. But for designers, that's still quite shocking because it's about solutions, it's about closure at the end of a project, etc., etc. And if that isn't there anymore, how, do, how are we going to work? When are we going to be happy with some things that we've done? What is even quality in these kind of projects? How do you define those kind of things? So I think we're, and um, the challenges before us are only getting bigger. I think we're absolutely right in saying that design has something to do in this space and can be very significant in this space. But the question that I would sort of like to pose for the discussion after our well-earned break is, okay, how does design actually need to change to be able to do this at all? Or is it not the designers anymore, the way they've been trained, but are those other people that are doing it? What is actually this new thing that we're trying to create together? And it is very needed. Um, I got approached by the Dutch government a couple of weeks ago. They landed the UN Center for uh, Center of Excellence for Climate Change Adaptation. And they probably got it because of sea level rising, dikes and those kind of things. But they realize it's much broader and they start calling me and you go, um, okay, I can do maybe something in that space. But it is about a complete redesign of everything in society when you start thinking about it. And how can we even start thinking about these things? Anyway, that's just a discussion starter. I think we're heading for a break now. Or six? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.